Welcome to Sinful's Horror Stories. Today's video features truly terrifying RV encounter stories. Whether you're cruising the USA on a road trip in your RV, or just on a simple, fun family vacation, no one is safe. Nowhere is safe. Sit back, relax, and enjoy these truly scary stories. Story number one. This is my uncle's story from years and years ago. This encounter took place near the Oregon coast back in the early 1980s. My Aunt Judy and Uncle Gary had just purchased a brand new top-of-the-line RV of its day. They took it out for a trip from Seattle down to California. They were about two hours into their drive near Cannon Beach in Oregon and stopped for a coffee break at a rest stop. The time was 6.30 a.m. and the sun was just coming up through the trees at the rest stop. When they pulled in and parked, there was one lonely old truck parked in the very back of the lot. They thought nothing of it, parked and used the facilities. My aunt walked back to the RV first and climbed inside and waited for my uncle. My uncle was getting a large hot coffee at the concession before they hit the road again. My uncle had his back turned to the RV while he was paying for his coffee. He heard a scream and the coffee hit the ground. If this was a movie, you would see the styrofoam cup falling in slow-mo, with ominous music playing in the background. Back to reality. The truck I mentioned before was now parked directly in front of their RV, nose in. My aunt had screamed out the window to alert my uncle. My uncle ran back to the RV, but the large truck revved its engine and kept him from reaching my aunt. Every time he tried to gain access to the RV, the truck would accelerate and pin him. The truck's windows were tinted well beyond the legal limit. This back and forth seemed to go on for hours, but was likely 10 minutes. My aunt finally got wise and got behind the wheel of the RV and gunned it. Remember, this RV was a 30-foot monster. She was able to push the truck aside and my uncle jumped in. They proceeded over the grass embankment and smashed onto the main road. The truck pursued them for several miles down the freeway weaving in and out of traffic to keep up with them. This time period was well before cell phones were a thing, so they had no way of alerting police. The truck sped up and rammed their rear end. My uncle told my aunt to buckle up because he was going to brake check this mystery man. Before he had the chance, the truck backed off as a sheriff's deputy pulled off of a speed trap and gave chase. The truck slowed and pulled off the sigh of relief from the rearview mirror. The chase had ended and they were severely traumatized. I often ask myself what I would do in that situation. How would I react? Comment below what you would do in the comment section, my friends, and stay safe. Story number two. When I was a young kid, my family would always take long family vacations in our RV. I have two younger brothers and my parents and us would travel the US road trip style and go wherever the road would lead us. See, my dad had this notion that stuffing all of us kids and mom into a confined space was the true meaning of vacation. Not so much. Anyway, on to the event in question. We had just crossed from Oregon to California my mom mentioned to my dad that a car had been following us for several miles. Every time we would change lanes or take turns, this car would pop up behind us each time. Coincidence? Maybe. It didn't seem like it at the time. Night had fallen upon us, and very dense fog was settling in over the roadway. I'm talking about fog so thick that visibility was next to nothing and it wasn't even safe to try and drive. This unknown vehicle popped up in my dad's rear view once more, and he had had enough of it. He decided to try and pull off at a gas station which was coming up in the next five miles. 
We were on a small two-lane side road with large ditches on each side of the roadway. One wrong move in this dense fog, and we would have even more serious problems to deal with. Dad had slowed his speed down to about 25 miles per hour at this point to avoid hitting something or someone. My mom was trying to keep the three of us distracted by playing card games on our little dining table. To be honest, looking back, I'm glad my younger brothers were oblivious to the potential danger that lie ahead of us. I played my cards on the table. Dad slammed his brakes on suddenly. My brothers yelled and were beyond frightened. My mom yelled to my dad that it was the same car again. The car had stopped in the middle of the road blocking our way. My dad scanned the area and decided to grab his tire iron and go outside to see what this man or woman's problem was. My mom begged him screaming, please don't leave us, and that this person could have a gun. My dad was a large six foot six, 300 pound imposing man and feared no one. We all watched as he approached the car in the foggy darkness. By the time dad reached the car, he was out of sight due to the dense fog. We heard a loud popping sound and a flash of light ring out through the mist. My mom screamed. Seconds later, my dad returned. He had been shot in his right forearm and was bleeding profusely. This was pure terror in human form. The car started shooting at our RV. Dad stomped on the gas and smashed the car into the ditch. We drove off into the night to the nearest hospital. Apparently, Dad said the man knew his name, but he did not recognize this stranger. He said hello and then opened fire. Dad was fine and just needed some stitches. Word to the wise, never approach anything unknown and always be as careful as you can in every situation. Story number three. It was a week of Christmas 2017 and my husband and I packed our RV to drive north to our daughter's home. All of the brothers and sisters will be together with our grandkids. Lots of Christmas fun ahead. My husband had just returned home from a business trip and was beyond exhausted. It was a good thing we both knew how to pilot our home on wheels. The weather was turning very cold with snow in the forecast. We would be traveling through the Rocky Mountain Range. I made coffee and packed the remaining gifts and we loaded the RV. It was time for the Prothero family to take off on their journey. I drove the first leg of the trip. It was early evening and I had been driving for two hours on the freeway and then my husband John would take over from there. We had heard of a bad accident in the mountain pass earlier in the day, so we decided to wait and make sure the accident had been cleared. We made this drive about four times a year to see our kids. They worry about us driving through the pass. We worry about our kids when they start driving at 16, and now they get to worry about us as we age. I was brewing more coffee in the kitchen area of the RV as John drove. The RV was warm, packed with bright, shiny boxes, full of Christmas love and cheer. Hours passed and we were sitting in our captain's seats up front while John drove. John had the high beams on as the snow was falling heavily now. We both looked out the windshield, then looked at each other. Up ahead in the middle of the road stood a young girl, perhaps 10 or 11 years old, all dressed in winter clothing. John said, Hold on, sweetie, we have to stop. The air was crisp and bitterly cold. There she stood, smiling. John was ready to exit the RV when we both looked again and she vanished. At that moment, we both questioned our own sanity. The snow blew sideways as we continued on our journey. We didn't talk for about half an hour after that. Then I burst out and said, John, are we losing it? John said, I sure hope not but the feeling was so eerie. John drove another hundred miles down the road from here, and then he shouted, There's the girl, the same girl, she's just standing there. Then she disappeared again. Our nerves were completely shot, 
we truly did not understand the vision that was this small girl. We were almost out of the mountains, thank God, as we keep seeing a ghostly little girl out before us. By now, we decided we would drive 50 more miles and then we would park at a rest area for a few hours of sleep. We keep John's handgun next to the bed for safety. We awoke at 4 a.m. It was then we heard a small knock on our door. We were still on high alert over the little girl. Who could be at our door? The rest stop was deserted and empty. John looked out the door window and saw no one. We opened the security drapes on the windshield. What do you think we saw in that dark night? The young girl was back. She's standing close to the RV. She appeared like a small angel with a glow about her. The wind was blowing her long brown hair. John opened up the door outside and said hello. She told us, I'm on my way home. It won't be long now. I asked her, why are we seeing you? I am no longer of this world. I'm of the heavenly world now. I've been worried about you traveling at night in such freezing conditions. I was sent to check on you before I left. Please tell Mama I'm fine. John looked at me and we both looked back. She was gone. We decided to stay a while longer to calm ourselves down. We turned on the satellite radio. The DJ was doing the news. Earlier today, a bad accident involved a mother and her daughter. The mother is in critical condition, and her daughter died at the scene. The two had hit a tree traveling through the mountain pass. The brown-haired precious girl was our vision. What if she hadn't been with us? Would we have made it through without an accident? Perhaps the stops we made to view her kept us from peril that we were unaware of. We did contact her mom when she recovered and asked if we could meet. We told her of our experience driving through the same mountain pass where her daughter had died earlier. She was so broken hearted. She asked us, was she wearing a plain long coat with black pants and red gloves? John looked at me and I looked back at him. We answered, yes, she was dressed exactly that way. Tears rolling down her face. I told her that the last thing she said was tell mama I am fine. Story number four. Every April for five years, my parents would pull me and my two brothers out of school for an extra week to add on to spring vacation. Two weeks was plenty of time to drive south on I-5 highway to San Diego, California, and then we would cut over to Calexico, California, where my mom's parents lived. There were always plenty of side trips from state parks, national parks, major league baseball games, historical landmarks, things like that. This trip was a little different than others in that our dad decided not to drive the family car south, but instead rented a brand new Winnebago motorhome, a top of the line vehicle with all the bells and whistles, including sleeping arrangements for all five of us. Our toy Kali Ollie was already at the vet's boarding facility, mail and newspaper service suspended for two weeks. All of our clothes and any items were packed and ready to go. On the first Saturday of our two weeks off, we were up at 5 a.m. We had breakfast and were on the interstate by 6 heading south. Around noon we landed in a state park for lunch. About 4.30 p.m. we centered Crater Lake National Park. This was to be our first overnight on our trip. The sky was a deep shade of blue. The lake was crystal clear and rimmed by mountains full of snow. There was a light fluffy layer of snow on the ground, but nothing we couldn't handle. Our dad got the RV hooked up to the plumbing by our little campsite, and then went looking for some firewood. Our mom had us help her set up the nice dinner in the motorhome. We all scraped out a small campfire site. Dad came back an hour later, loaded to his face with firewood. We helped him light the fire and dinner was on. It was still fairly early in the year, so dusk was on us in no time, leading into a clear black sky with a large moon shining, tons of stars overhead. Dad kept the fire going while we helped our mom clean up the dishes. Then we sat by a nice campfire for a while before going to bed. 
Around 9.30 p.m. as we were moving inside to hit the hay, we heard a couple of wolves howling in the distance. My mom stepped outside to get my father. He told us not to worry. Our safety was staying inside the RV and that he would keep us warm and safe. My dad never mentioned that she had brought along a cannon of a pistol for worst case scenario. One of my brothers stumbled onto it while looking for a deck of playing cards. Our mom caught onto it and politely told us not to talk about the gun. She said our dad would do whatever was needed to keep us safe. We all fell asleep rather quickly. The rest of the night passed peacefully enough. My dad was up at daybreak to pick up more firewood for a breakfast fire while we ate outside. Mom followed suit by laying a picnic tablecloth onto the table. She then had placed cereal bowls that were full of multi-jelly donuts out for breakfast. Our mom then got us up and said it was time to eat. In a moment of complete surprise and total terror, mom and my three brothers watched a large black bear up on her hind feet with two cubs eating our breakfast as if it was our own. Mom grabbed our arms and said simply, get into the RV and stay there, be quiet. She then let out a blood curdling scream, Kurt, bears! He was just around the corner, you could hear his load of firewood hit the ground. Nora, get the gun, he yelled. In only a matter of a few seconds, my dad had disconnected the bathroom plumbing and was set at the steps leading into the RV. As if this had been rehearsed, Mom gave our dad the gun, and she then slid into the driver's seat and had the engine idling. Dad took the gun, turned, and yelled as loud as for the bears to get out of here. He then did the unthinkable. He fired two warning shots over the mother bear's shoulders. In an instant, all three of the bears ambled off into the forest. No breakfast and no campfire to say the least. Our parents didn't really start to calm down until we were out of the park. Being very impressionable boys, 10, 9, and 7, we were scared out of our minds to see the bears so close to our RV. But what will always stand out in our memories was our dad went to his own version of beast mode and whipped out the gun to protect his family at all costs. When camping in the woods, you better be prepared. Your own horror story may be brought out on by wolves, mountain lions, or large black bears. Don't forget, give a bear a reason to stand up and fight. They just might. And last but not least, if a bear is given a chance to chase you, they probably will. Thank you guys for watching and listening. Please be sure to leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe for future content. If you like true scary posts, conspiracy, and horrorish facts, follow my Instagram at be scared now. Send in your stories to thesinfulsavant at gmail.com. I will leave a link in my info box below. Till we meet again, stay sinful.